Aggie Nation, you may feel upset. You may feel dejected. You may feel just flat out angry after a baseball coach betrayed you after a very successful season for the Texas Longhorns. I'm with you. I feel you. I'm angry for you. That's ridiculous what happened to you. But Aggie fans, head up. Listen to me. Head up. Let's put the baseball behind us, and let's welcome the football into the conversation. Because I think you should have a lot of hope. Because your football team, your football program, has a very bright future. And I know exactly what you're saying. I know we hear that every single year. It says the same thing. Look out for Texas A&M. Texas A&M is coming. Texas A&M can be a threat. I know. We hear it every year. And every year, they let us down. They disappoint. I want to start off by saying that I'm not going to... I'm not going to say this is going to happen this year. A&M won't be wildly successful this year. You won't suddenly see a new team out on the field. But they're building something special in College Station. They're building a foundation. And you best believe that. Because there's a new sheriff in town in College Station. And his name is Mike Elko. I have a lot of confidence in Texas A&M's first-year head coach, Mike Elko. He's what you call a transformative coach. He's the coach whose role is to go to programs who are struggling or are trying to reach that ultimate goal, but they keep stumbling along the way. And that's exactly where Texas A&M is right now. They need that little extra push over the hill. They, they, they have the ingredients. They have all the components that you need for a championship team but they just haven't made that final push over the hill. That's where I think somebody like Mike Elko comes in because he transforms. When there's a team out there who just has one missing piece, Mike Elko is the kind of guy that comes in there and brings that team to the next level. He's brought, the reports have shown Mike Elko has already brought a new enthusiasm to College Station. It's contagious, it's infectious, and you're going to see this team improve year in and year out through his leadership. Texas A&M needed a fresh reset. I love Jimbo Fisher. I respect him. He was one of the great coaches I watched growing up. What he did in Florida State was amazing. And there were a couple good years at Texas A&M. The 2020 season was successful. The 2021 season felt successful. But ultimately, A&M and Jimbo Fisher just weren't the right match. And after a while, you just saw that that was evident and a divorce was imminent. And this team needed a fresh reset. Like I said, everything is there. The roadmap is there. They just need the right person to drive the truck. And I really think that they got it And Mike Elko. If Mike Elko can transform Duke, who's known historically as a basketball school, into a competitive football program in the ACC who beat Clemson in prime time in a standalone game on a national stage. I can't wait to see what he does at Texas A&M with all those resources. Now, all the enthusiasm around this Texas A&M program right now is great, but that enthusiasm has to translate into results down the line. I think that A&M has the potential to have a successful season this year. And by successful, I mean like 9-3. and three. I'm not expecting this team to just suddenly skyrocket this year because you're talking about a team that has a first-year head coach. It's Mike Elko's first year with the Aggies. But I think that A&M has enough talent to where, despite that situation, they can be competitive for a college football playoff spot late in the season because you will see an SEC team with three losses get into the playoff. Especially a team like A&M, a reputable brand like that, you will see the playoff committee let them in. Texas A&M has quarterback Connor Wegman returning this year, and I've always been an advocate for Connor Wegman. I think that he's a fantastic quarterback talents, who, and you've seen glimmers of success out of him. There's a lot of potential there. But it just hasn't really materialized because of injuries. And 2023 is the latest example of that. Connor Wegman was off to a very hot start last year. Through four games, he had 979 passing yards and eight touchdowns. So very good stats. 
But unfortunately, on week four against Auburn, his season came to an end as a result of an injury. It was very unfortunate because he was on a great pace. And I think that if he were to have stayed healthy for the rest of the 2023 season, he could have had a fantastic season. But in Connor Wegman's case, his offensive line was not great at all last year, did not perform well as a unit. And their inability to consistently protect for Connor Wegman resulted in his season-ending injury last year. So if he were to have stayed upright, who knows what he could have done. You also have to consider the fact that Texas A&M star tight end Donovan Green is returning this season. He missed the entirety of 2023 because he sustained a season-ending injury in fall camp last year. He never played a snap last year, which was very unfortunate for the Aggies. They were already behind the eight ball going into 2023, and the season hadn't even started yet. So not a particularly great situation. But looking back on that now and comparing that situation to what they're walking into this season, Texas A&M has a very favorable situation as they have both Connor Wegman and Donovan Green healthy going into the season, and I think that that will be a very productive duo this year. Texas A&M's receiving core is composed of a lot of guys who you, you have seen a lot of promise from but they haven't emerged into household names. You have guys like Jade Walker and Noah Thomas, who you, you, you've you seen, just like with Connor Wegman, those glimmers of greatness. But they haven't become those consistent household names yet. You also have Moose Muhammad, who was a backup last year. He's now transitioning into a starting receiver this year. And he's one of those guys who you'll see make dazzling plays. And you'll be like, wow. Who is that guy? I like that guy. He's really good. He's got a lot of potential. And those plays catch your attention. But he just hasn't been consistent. I think that you'll see him with more experience under his belt now. I think that you'll see Moose Muhammad start to become a more consistently performing receiver this year. And I I think that there's a lot of potential in this receiver room. And you'll see their production go from here to here this year as they become more comfortable more comfortable and start to gel as a group as a unit overall now it's offensive line got to address the elephant in the room here this unit is the reason why Connor Wegman was sidelined from week four on last year their pass protection was not good at all last year they have to perform better as an overall unit but I'm confident that this Texas A&M offensive line is going to get better this year I'm feeling optimistic today. I'm seeing the glass as half full, not half empty today. And I think that you will see this offensive line improve this year. It has to. You've got to see Connor Wegman stay upright. If they can protect him, I think that you really can see Texas A&M compete for a playoff spot down the line this year. And it'll be interesting. Now let's look on the defensive side of things. There's a lot of stars on Texas A&M's defense, but they're scattered around in all different position rooms. You have defensive lineman Shamar Turner and the Purdue transfer defensive lineman Nick Scourton. That's going to be a great duo this year. And Texas A&M's defense is always hard-hitting. There's always a great defensive front on Texas A&M, and I don't think you'll see any shortage of that this year. You also get to figure out safety Bryce Anderson. He'll be great for this team secondary this year. The cornerback room. Can use some improvements. Um, I, th- there are a lot of games last year where I saw that cornerback room get absolutely flamed. The Alabama game being one of them. But with Will Lee the third transferring from Kansas State, I think that he alone can help to elevate this cornerback room here at Texas A&M, and I think that you'll see that improve. So we're we're seeing a theme, a team last year that's very talented, but didn't exactly perform with full potential. We've got a new regime here in A&M, guided by Mike Elko, and I think that you're going to see that, that influence in year one. Now, again, I'm not insinuating that this team is going to go 11-1 and one or anything, because typically a coach doesn't reach those heights in his first year with the program, but I am insinuating that you're going to see just a new energy and a new vibe overall with this Texas A&M team this year, and I can't wait, because it's been a long time coming. 
Now, I'm, I'm going to make a reference to something that Colin Cowherd, who is somebody that I grew up watching, always references on his show. And it's the head coach quarterback duo. It's imperative to success in football. And I would say that it's one of the key ingredients in the recipe for a team pursuing and winning a championship. Texas A&M has exactly had that coaching quarterback duo down in a very long time. And I think that this year, 2024, may potentially be the first season that you've seen them have that in a long time. Mike Elko, who I think is a fantastic, transformative head coach, being paired with Connor Wegman, who is a quarterback with a lot of potential you've seen glimmers of greatness out of. But injuries have held him back from developing into a household name. Having somebody like Mike Elko involved in that Texas A&M program now, I think you're going to see that's helped to elevate Connor Wegman from one level to the next I think that that partnership between Mike Elko and Connor Wegman is going to be amazing and productive, and I think that you're going to see it bring the Texas A&M football program to heights that it hasn't been in a very long time. I'm going to end this video with a stat that's going to blow your mind. So there's something that gets released in late June every year called the Blue Trip Ratio, and what it is essentially is a measurement of how much a team's talent contributes to their chances of winning a national championship. And this ratio has been wildly accurate at predicting national champions. Michigan had the highest blue chip ratio last season. Georgia had the highest blue chip ratio the year before that, and Georgia had it again the year before that. That's three in a row. This thing is dangerously accurate at predicting national champions. So what's your blue chip ratio rankings this year? Well, the number one team is the Ohio State Buckeyes, followed by Alabama, followed by Georgia, followed by Texas A&M. Believe it or not, Texas A&M has the fourth highest blue chip ratio going into the 2024 season which is unreal. It's 79%, which is off the charts. So on paper, this team can realistically win a national championship. Because they have a first-year head coach, I'm saying that I'm not predicting that that's going to happen, that they're going to be in that mix when you get to the Final Four. But I'm not going to close out the possibility of that happening because college football is wild. We've all seen 2007, and anything can happen. So I'm not going to sit here and say it can't happen, but... My gut feeling is that it ultimately won't. They're a growing, ascending program right now. And this year is going to be a foundational year for those Aggies. But that blue chip ratio suggests that this team has the talent and the ingredients to become a sustainably successful program in years to come. And I think that they're going to just because of their financial and support resources. I'm having Mike Elko as a head coach to the talent that they have, I don't see any way that this doesn't develop into a program that competes for national championships each and every single year. I, I, I can't wait to see this program continue to grow and continue to gain momentum, and 2024 is going to be the foundation for it all. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and the time that you took out of your day to watch the video, and if you enjoyed it, Please be sure to like the video and share it, as well as subscribe to The Era. The more likes and subscribers I get on this channel, the more resources I can attain, and the more resources I can attain, the more value I can provide to you, the viewer. And that is how I show my appreciation for you for the time that you devote to watching my videos. So thank you so much, and have a great day.